Welcome to Holostar's Pass the Lore. The rules are simple. I begin by telling a short story about myself. I then pass it on to the next Holostar's member. What the next person in line has to do is do their best to remember all the details of the story and pass it on to the next member and the next and the next until the last member in line. We win the game if the story remains mostly intact and lose if, well, you get the point. And so, without further ado, let's begin. This is a story of a little puppeteer. A humble, kind, and gentle puppeteer. He who hails from the arid lands of South Elysium, the one and only host of the greatest puppet show in all the land. He whose name starts with an O and ends with an O. He is the opulent, octatonic, operatic puppet master, Octavio. It was bright and dry, a day just like any other day. Octavio was hard at work on his latest creation. The night before, he had an incredible spark of inspiration. Instead of crafting a full-bodied puppet, he would put all his effort and time into creating simply the bust of a puppet. Earlier that week, he visited the museum owned by Madame Toissade, way back in the district that housed the infamous Shul Tyrene Library. And it was here that this idea first flourished. Today, he would make this idea a reality. He would not just craft the facade, but the insides as well, so that no one would doubt his status as the one true puppet master in all of Elysium. The base would be the skull. He would recreate the sutures of the cranium to absolute perfection, Satsuga Puppetia. Next would be the installation of the brain up to the, to the tiniest axon and synapse he will wholeheartedly create. He would move on to the sinuses, the tongue, the muscles, even the vocal cords, so that with a tug of a string, the bust will sing. Lastly would be the skin, the hair follicles, and the organs of sight, smell, and taste. But something was missing in his collection of materials. A thyroid gland! Where in God's desert the Elysium would our puppet master get a thyroid gland fit for a puppet master's masterpiece? <gasps> Zinokuni! While he didn't like the idea of going outdoors while his puppet is unfinished, there was no doubt in his mind he must travel to Zinokuni. And so he donned his cloak, picked up his conductor's baton, and braided his hair. Put on a little lip balm because reports say it's going to be a bit chilly there. He practiced the ancient words. Suimasen! Hi! Onigaishimasu! and point to Kado. He opened his door and went on a grand adventure to Zinokuni. What happened in Zinokuni, you say? Well, let's leave that story for another day. Okay, um, story time by Gerard T. Rexford. Oh, Jesus Christ, what the fuck are you trying to make me do, Octavio? You of all people know that I have a fucking terrible memory. Um, uh... So, if I remember correctly... There... There ye be, um... A puppeteer who wants to create a puppet. And... He... He... He had this idea of... Making a puppet that's like, um, just only a bust up, uh, I, I think, and, and he, 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 he traveled far and wide to, uh, to, 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 to get materials for this puppet. But the thing is, he doesn't want like, uh, a regular puppet. He wants, he wants just. Uh, a, a, a half body puppet, I believe, and uh, he he was very intricate about the details of of wanting um, um, thyroid gland, but um, there isn't anything about thyroid gland. So what he did was okay. I'm gonna find thyroid gland into the land of 
Xenokuni, where he must learn Japanese words of um Japanese words of uh uh pointo card and story for another time. Okay, so... From what I understand, we're doing story relay. But unfortunately, the person right before me was a blithering fucking idiot and dropped the ball pretty hard. So I'm just going to try my best to relay what was relayed by that person. I'm not going to name any names, but they are... You know, I'm going to keep it subtle, but they are a dinosaur and a prince. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Obviously, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. I will relay what they relayed perfectly because I'm a fucking genius and I remember everything I've ever heard. And then I'll probably freestyle the rest of the story for you since they didn't bother finishing it. <clears throat> so, once upon a time, there was a puppeteer who wanted to create a puppet, but they only wanted a puppet with a bus stop. For some reason. So a half-body puppet, if you would. Um, but they were missing a bunch of materials, and they had to travel far and wide, all across the land. Multiple lands, multiple places. They were really on that grind set, you know, harvesting, like, premium fucking shit. I'm talking, like, mithril down in the dwarvish mines, and they were heading out there, and they were collecting, like, uh, uh, crystal, like, dewdrop tears from, like, the ancient gods of the fucking, um, the high mountains, and all that cool stuff, right? But what they really wanted was a thyroid gland for this uh, half-body puppet for some reason. So they needed to go to Xenokuni so that they could learn, I guess, Japanese words and medicine for some other reason. And it's around here that the story cuts off, but don't worry, I've got it covered. Um, so once they got to Xenokuni, what they quickly realized was that learning an entire language wasn't quite as easy as they had hoped. But through medical practice alone and skill, they were able to puppet a Xenokunian and talk through them so that they could figure out the, the process of harvesting a thyroid gland so that they could implement that into their weird half-body puppet, which henceforth will be called a smuppet. So they, they got their thyroid gland, they put it in their smuppet, and they created a companion for life who would be their best friend. But unfortunately, what's this? Oh, it was a friendship not meant to be. It was short-lived, for the puppet developed a mind of its own. It turns out the thyroid gland is where we store the soul. And so... Inadvertently, the puppeteer had stolen a soul from a native Xenokunian, and they had implanted that into their half-body Smuppet. So the Smuppet, realizing that it was now in a body that was not its own and it could not feel, it could no longer be one with life. It could, it could sense the world dying around it because it itself was no longer part of the living, chose, tragically, to leave on its own journey of self-discovery. It left the puppeteer one tragic day, on a ride back across the sea from Xenokuni, the Smuppet threw itself into the ocean, and it floated to the bottom, where it remains now, witnessing the deep, dark depths, the terrors that no man can comprehend. Some say it found itself down there. Others say it perished under the crushing weight of the world and the knowledge that it can never again be a person. So yeah, anyway, that's definitely what was said. Okay, uh, bye! <laughs>
They went to okay, so they went to Zinokuni and they they got they got the the, the mithril and these materials and they were they're going to make a pup. They went to Zinokuni because the the puppet had a thyroid problem, and and they had to speak through the puppet, uh, because they didn't speak Zinoku Zinoku Zinokunian and 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 that's that's why uh, uh okay, and then uh they uh it was called a smuppet, and then and then the smuppet. Uh, went, went, went crazy. He started all acting crazy, like went off crazier than usual, and and uh, they didn't like that, not one bit. And then the Smuppet went 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 nuts, and uh, the, the, the something about the thyroid, and and then uh, it it <coughs> excuse me, it, it then it uh it jumped into the water, and it died. Um, into the darkest depths of 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 the ocean, it died. I think I'm forgetting some parts. I think okay. So then, then you guys, there are those adventurers. They they went out and they retrieved resources. And then there was a giant dog. There was a giant dog, and he he demanded that the adventurers give him the resources. But the adventurers said no, no, we will not give our resources to you, giant dog. And the giant dog went la la la, and then chased the adventurers. All around, uh, all around the kingdom, chase, chase them around the kingdom for seven days and seven nights. And then one of the adventurers uh, was a really old guy, so he he didn't make it very far. He got trampled by the giant dog and passed away. His name was his name was uh, Derek. And uh, then the smuppet died, and it it fell it fell into the, into the deep abyss, never knowing love, always feeling pain, and honestly. It's for the better. Okay. I think that that went well. Uh I just woke up and was told this, so now I have to tell this back. Um so there are these adventurers. I think, and they were going to Elysium, but they were like from Elysium. They were going to Zinakuni, but they couldn't speak the language, apparently. And they were looking for a puppet. They're trying to make a puppet? They're trying to. Something about a puppet, like acquiring and getting the puppet into like their party i don't know if it was like an item or like a person that was supposed to join their group but they were like going to dinokuni couldn't speak the language but they needed to get the puppet um something about mithril uh the last guy just mentioned it and i don't i don't know he, he never he never like explained what the mithril was for or like if it was a component of the puppet oh the puppet's name is smuppet apparently, or it is a Smuppet. I don't know if it's the name, or if it's like the description of it. Um, it was just referred to as Smuppet, so I, I maybe it's a name? So there's these people, they go to these adventures, they go to Elysium, and they go to Zinakuri, but they couldn't speak it, so they were looking for this thing, it's like the, the Smuppet, and apparently they had to also go and get resources. It's never explained what the resources are, uh, they're they're just consi they're just called resources, and something about a dog. Um, that was like, bark bark, bark bark bark. Um, oh wait, no, the dog wanted the resources, and then the by the time the adventurers encountered the dog, they had the resources, and the dog was like, "Give me those." And then apparently, Smuppet was part of the party. Um. Because it died, but like before Smuppet died, they got chased by the dog, and then... Oh, oh yeah, spoiler alert, Smuppet dies, apparently. Uh, there's an older member of the party. His name was Derek. He got trampled by the dog, um, and then passed away. I, I... I... I didn't know there was a Derek in the party, but apparently there was, but no longer. Um, so, Derek died. And then Smuppet also died because Smuppet fell into a lake, uh, where he drowned. I'm not. Can puppets drown? I don't think they need air. So like, yeah. Um. Uh, 
the the last person to tell me the story made it very they wanted to focus very heavily on the fact that Smuppet never felt love and only felt pain, which is a very important detail that stuck with me because it's very relatable. Um and I think that was the end of the story. I don't know if there was any more or if like no, I think that was it. That was it. Yeah, um no, we don't know what happened to the adventurers. One of one of them died, Derek, uh rest in peace, uh Smuppet. Yeah. Um still don't know where the Mithra was. Don't know what the 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 resources were in general. But uh big dog. Bark bark. Bark. Woof. Um it was a bit more aggressive when, when they told it to me, so like, I'm probably not doing it the right justice. It was like, Grr. <laughs> Sorry, It was like that, um... Yeah. <laughs> Hello, this is a story about how there were Elysium adventurers looking for the legendary puppet called Smuppet. There's a dog there. The dog wants to gain the legendary items so they can fully understand the Smuppet Puppet. This dog was the god dog of Hades. And the dog said, forfeit all your possessions. So the Elysium Adventures got to their designated arrival point to go to Xenokuni. Unfortunately, they can only speak it in Elysium. -ish. So basically they are Xenokuni and Taurus, the assholes. They found a man who knew about the Smuppet legend. Unfortunately, this man knew nothing. The only thing this man knew to tell the party was of Mithra from Final Fantasy 1 and the Zunikonian puppet Smuppet. Or may I say, the Smuffler. How bad could he possibly be? It was an ancient puppet, the Smuppet puppet from Zunikuni, put there ages ago with the Archress. It was amazing. Anyways, this dog, while he helps the party, he is still the dog of Hades, and he killed an older member of the party named Derek. Derek had a wife and kids, but the dog didn't care. After all, the dog had no self-esteem and he's never cared for himself, so why would he care about anything else, right? Unfortunately, this just made the tension between the party grow. And they constantly had it shoved in their face that they did not speak anything or any language that could be used in Xenokuni. And yet again, they look for the Smuppet Puppet, but they're unable to find them. No one knows what the Smuppet Puppet is. Maybe the Smuppet Puppet were the friends you made along the way, but no one really does know. You could get a nice deal at the Walmart for buy two, one, get one free with the Smuppet. But that's what would happen in the modern day. Unfortunately, this story takes place in the 1800s. The puppet of the Smuppet of Elysium. Xenokuni. Xenokuni and customs. And once they find the Smuppet puppet, then they may Smuppet on their puppets that they smuffling. The smuffling the Smuppet puppet. The dog helps them, but really, it's all to further the dog's own goals. Like a typical human. And of course, the members of the party, following post Derek's death, they simply listen to this because they have nothing better to do. Just like those before them and those that will come after. They've been told what to do their entire lives, even if they think they have free will. And so the party listens to the dog, not knowing that they're putting away all their love and fear a little bottle to be drunken by the Smuppet Puppet. It's a heart-rending tale. Sometimes I, I just shook up by thinking about it. Let's tell the Smuppet Puppet. <laughs> the tale of the Smuppet Puppet, okay. So the Smuppet Puppet is like a legendary god from what I can like understand from this and there was a dog Apparently the fucking dog of Hades that went to a trip to Sinokuni so they could find the Smuppet Puppet But they only spoke Elysian And 
They were tourists, apparently. <laughs> the dog had self-esteem, and the dog had a fucking family, and they were paired up with a guy from Final Fantasy, it seems like. And they were in a prolonged quest to find this Muppet Puppet. What people don't know is that the Smuppet Puppet is a god, and the Smuppet Puppet has the ability to um, give you testicular torsion in command. So the cool thing about the Smuppet Puppet is that you really can't see it, but you can feel it, because like whenever you walk into the place where the Smuppet Puppet is in domain, your balls twist, you go, ah! and that's how you know that you are in the presence of the Smuppet Puppet. It must be rough to be a dog in this time. <laughs> so TLDR, the Muppet Puppet is a god and you are a dog and the dog went to Sinokuni even though he doesn't speak Sinokunian and he speaks Elysian and he's just um, a, a dog with a family that has a party that gave up because at the end of the day, the Muppet Puppet is the friends we made along the way. Thank you, everybody. Bonsai Haka out. Um, okay, so I got my notes because you know, you, you know how I like taking notes, right? I so, from my recollection, there's a puppet named Sump Sump Slumpet, and there are these dogs, right? And there's a dog, his name is Hades. I, I thought that was copyrighted. Is that free copyright grounds? Do we own, do we all like own Hades? Anyways, a, a bunch of Elysium like men who are fru fruity? Oh, no, no, um, no, the tourists, the tourists. They're looking for the legend of Shmuppet. Whatever the fuck that is. But okay, so there's a man who doesn't know shit about Final Fantasy. He's like one of the members. That and then there's like the, this ancient puppet who who Flayon's robot his dog was using. And then D Derek, <laughs> the cat, who has no self-esteem, by the way, uh, makes tension grow in the party of the boys and everything. Look at my notes. Uh, but regardless, they're still they're still going and on the adventure because they're so strong, and they're looking for the Smuppet puppet. And smuffling is an act when mommy and daddy love each other very much. Look, I'm just going, I'm just winging this shit. Okay, so the members went to a non-copyrighted fast food restaurant and they began to speak about their favorite anime. Maybe the otaku talk would conjure up the smuppet so that they wouldn't have to adventure and it would fix up the self-esteem issues of every member. Okay, well, that sounds fa fantastic. Doesn't that sound great? Um, and then according to the legend, according to the legend, it did! The Smuppet of Puppet of fucking Legend <laughs> actually made it there and they ate fucking burgers together! And they lived happily ever after and they're all praying. The end. <laughs> uh, Octavia, what is this? What 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 are we doing here? Like can I can I go eat my sweet potato fries that are in the oven, please? <sighs> okay, um, where do I even start? So, this is a story about this guy called Shmuppet the Puppet with a dog called Hades and some fruity tourists going on an adventure together, from what I remember. Look, okay, this isn't fair. Gibby had notes. I didn't. I'm just... I just listened to it once. I didn't have notes. I didn't have nothing, so I don't really remember what the story was like. But apparently they're going on this adventure, some like Final Fantasy style adventure. But then some motherfucker didn't know what Final Fantasy was, so... Uh, Flayon got on his autress and decided to fuck that guy up. And, uh, what else happened? Um, uh, I remember he said they live happily ever after. No, they, they went on an adventure. Oh, they had barbecue. Yeah, that's right. They had, like, barbecue 
at the promised land or some shit. So, uh, Shmuppet the Puppet, uh, the, the dog called Hades, um, the fruity tourists, and Fleon on his archress, they all went on an adventure, beat up some guy who didn't know what Final Fantasy was, went to the promised land, had some barbecue, and they lived happily ever after. Is what I kind of remember. Look, this is like, I I've never, you know, done this kind of thing. Look, I, I would look back and listen to it more than once if I could, but Octavio was like, oh, you can only listen to it once, you can't listen to it more. So, uh, yeah, I don't really remember, and I didn't prepare notes or anything, because as soon as I started watching Gibby's, he was like, oh, I, writ I wrote down notes and shit, and I was like, ah, fuck, I didn't do none of that. But yeah, um, so, to recap the story once again, um, Shmuppet the Puppet, uh, Hades the Dog, some fruity tourists, and uh, Fleon on the Archeress decided to go on an adventure, found this guy who didn't know what Final Fantasy was about, beat the shit out of him, went to the promised land, had some barbecue, and lived happily ever after, is the story that I'm getting here. But yeah, um, I wonder what the person after me is gonna think about that. Uh, we shall see. Uh, good luck, haha, <laughs> bye, chicken balls. Oh, I already forgot half of it. Uh oh. Okay, well, I just heard the entire story from Axel. I'll give it a try. Um, <clears throat> okay. So th the characters are set, right? You have Shmuppet the Puppet. Or Schmuck, I'm not sure. Is he a Schmuck or a Puppet? Maybe both. Shmuppet. And then we have a dog named Hades Nuts. So Hades Nuts and Shmuppet go on an adventure. Uh... They go on an adventure with this guy who doesn't know Final Fantasy, right? They're going on an adventure that, that, that seems like Final Fantasy, but a guy doesn't know Final Fantasy. So for some reason, Fleon's there too. And he's in his giant archress. Murders that guy. Absolutely brutally murders that guy. Mm. Shmuppet and Hades nuts. They should have seen it coming. It's crazy. Then, they finally got to... The Promised Land? The Promised Land? And they had Yakiniku! Mm. They had Kaotong. They had Delicious Kaibi. Mmm. And they lived happily ever after. Did I forget anything? Let's see, um, Shmuppet, uh, Hades Nuts, the dog, um, brutally murdered because he doesn't know Final Fantasy, uh, Fleon for some reason, um, uh, happy li uh, lived happily ever after. Yeah, what a story. I feel like I've lost so much of it. Probably so many details that Axel left out, but hey, it all works out. And they lived happily ever after. Uh, what the hell happened to my story?